Okay, so now that we got the uh, dated memes out of the way, there are one of this video is to show you guys how my scuffed VR setup works, as well as some of the configuration involved and its, well, extensive limitations. So the reason I decided to make this video is so that I don't have to constantly explain my stupid ass setup all the time. I'm using an Android phone, my two Nexus 6Ps is my head mounted display, and here's how that works. I just unlock the phone and the app auto starts, then I throw it into this plastic Google Cardboard thing called a Noon. Strap it in, align the phone, and it's done. The app I use is called iVRY. It streams the Steam VR display to my phone's display. It works by encoding the Steam VR display output into an H.264 video stream and sending it over the Wi-Fi to my phone. This also allows it to be wireless, but this process does add a lot of delay to the display, making it impossible to stand on one foot. The video stream runs at 2K resolution, 60 hertz, 100 megabits per second bitrate. Also for you per eye people, that's about 1440 by 1280. The only other HMD I have tried before is the Oculus DK2. And from what I can remember, I think the image from my phone looks better. I have a second phone because they only have two hours of battery life each, even though I have recently replaced the batteries in both of them. The poor battery life is due to how demanding decoding the video stream is on the phone's crappy CPU. This causes the phone to get very hot and discharge a lot faster than normal. Also because these phones have custom firmware, once I had configured everything once, I just cloned one phone to the other, and then it was done. I added this fan from an old graphics card and connected it to my phone using an OTG adapter. This is used to help cool down the phone and prevent thermal throttling, which was causing the phone to drop frames. This results in what I like to call the VLC experience. <laughs> This is less than desirable in VR. Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? I just want a picture of a I use these PlayStation Move controllers for just hand rotation and button input. They work pretty well for this. To use them, I just turn them on and they connect automatically to my computer with Bluetooth. I also decided to remove the LEDs because they are bright as fuck. This should also give the controllers a little bit better battery life and I don't need them. I also removed the rumble motors as well to make the controllers a little bit lighter. The main downside of using PS Move controllers is the Vive touchpad emulation. It works by holding down a button and then rotating the controller in the direction you would normally press on the touchpad. Because of this, I can't use avatar gestures in VR chat, but I messaged the developer of Driver for VR about it, and it looks like he'll add a way to perform gestures in the next update. Wait a minute, is that? <coughs> ah yes, very good. Here is my old original setup. It's using an Xbox 360 Kinect with sunglasses over the camera for manual exposure to track the LEDs on my PS Move controllers. With the setup, I was using my desktop monitor as a VR display. Because of this, I had no head rotation, which made simple interaction in games quite challenging. So it was like a hybrid VR setup, but with only hand tracking. My current setup is using just an Xbox One Kinect with skeleton tracking. The Kinect only runs at 30 FPS, and this limits tracking speed quite a lot. Here you can see how the Kinect is tracking me, and how that data translates into movement in-game. Here's what calibration looks like in-game. Just line up my feet with the avatar's feet, line up my hands, and done. I use a Pulse Audio module on my Linux computer to stream the audio on a TCP socket from my Windows virtual machine to my phone. Womic is an app I use to stream my headset's microphone that is plugged into my phone to my computer. I use a program called Reaper for additional audio processing on my microphone, like equalization, noise removal, and auto-tune, because why not? All of this adds about a second of audio lag, and is just dumb and overkill. I could have just bought a wireless headset, but I didn't want to because they're normally trash. The main piece of software that I use to make all this work is called Driver for VR. It allows the Kinect and PS Move controllers to work with Steam VR. I play Beat Saber with my normal computer monitor. The reason for this being is the video lag on my phone is too much to play a real-time rhythm game like Beat Saber. I also don't use my PS Move controllers because there is a delay that causes them to be out of sync with the Kinect's positioning data. So it would be better if I could use them, but because of this delay, I find it much better to play with just the Kinect for tracking. But because I'm not using a controller, Driver for VR has to emulate hand rotation. It does this by checking where my hands are positioned relative to my elbows. So I can't flick my wrist like how you would play this game normally making it extremely exhausting to play and impossible to get good scores, but it's still a whole lot of fun. Well, in the end, I would not recommend the setup to anyone, 
unless you have a lot of free time and you enjoy problem solving and configuring a lot of shit, I'm probably just going to buy RFDS. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed having your time wasted learning about some dumb shit that no one cares about, and uh, enjoy this footage of me looking like a complete idiot playing Beat Saber. I'm left there with my thoughts I'm the image of you being with someone else But it's eating me up inside But we run our course We pretended we're okay Now if we jump together At least we can swim far away from the wreck we made Then only